Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Turn 2 Podcast. We have a really special show planned for you today. Scott Kornberg and Troy Johnston. We have uh, a former teammate of Troy and one of her old guests is co-hosting today, Greg Colbrin. Jake Mangum, happy to bring you on the show. Guys, how are you doing today? Thank you for, for coming by, you and Colby, uh, and making the time for us before cages and BP and everything today. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Jake, is is it weird? You played for Jacksonville last year. How weird is it? I know you're, you're out this week with an injury, but is it weird to be back here as a visitor with the Durham Bulls? Yeah, this is my first time in my career that I've ever played a former team, um, you know, ever. And uh, in August, we go to Syracuse. That'll be the second time ever. Um, but it's, it's weird, you know, being on the other side of the field. Um, you know, the visitor locker room, it's weird. But, you know, the guys in Durham have been great. Uh, the Rays organization have been great. And uh, it's good to be back in Jacksonville to see everything. The, the, all the new stuff to the field looks fantastic. The new fence, the new field, the new scoreboard. Uh, they've done a really good job here. So have you had any plans to, like, derail the jumbo shrimp? I know Colby was, <laughs> was getting at you at, at BP for distracting Xavier Edwards. Is that all part of the Durham Bulls, like, you know, get under their skin sort of deal. That's why they win all the time. Oh, man, I, I don't know about all that. But, uh, you know, it's it's good to see all your former teammates, former coaches. You know, it's uh, baseball is a very small world. You know, you, you come across a lot of people that you've played against, played with. It's uh, it's a small community, man. As big as the game is, it really is a small community. So to kind of go off of that, you have a very interesting nickname that has kind of stuck with you for a bit. Uh, it's the mayor. <laughs> Do you want to give us a little background on that of how – that nickname kind of came about yeah so uh my freshman year at mississippi state i grew up like an hour and a half away so um some of the older guys on the team were kind of messing with me because i knew so many people on campus uh you know um and they'd be like man you're kind of like the mayor around here aren't you and it just stuck man it initially it was them, the seniors kind of messing with me as a freshman and it just stuck so yeah. where did you meet all these players i mean these people that everybody that you knew High school, uh, half of my high school uh, would go to Mississippi State or Old Miss. So, you know, it was uh, a lot of guys that I went to high school with, played with, played against, would all be at Mississippi State. And uh, you just kind of, you know, over the years, you meet a lot of people in the Mississippi and they all kind of stay home for college. Okay. That's a good answer. <laughs> what was it What was it like growing up in Flowood, correct? Pearl. Pearl. I'm born, sorry, Pearl. Born, born in Flowood. Uh, went to high school in Flowood and was born in, uh, and was raised in Pearl. Home of the Mississippi Braves. What was it like? Because, uh, of course, somebody from the West Coast and even Colby from the West Coast, even though he identifies as South Carolina now. Yeah, I'm Southern. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like growing up in Mississippi, especially with two highly touted colleges that is known almost worldwide? The, uh, what you could argue, Wait a minute here. You could worldwide argue for with, uh, Southern Miss as well. For what? Worldwide? Yes. I would say for sports, for the people, for their educations. I mean, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, like you said, Southern Miss. Uh, man, it, it it's it's a strange <laughs> dynamic because it's uh, we have two minor league baseball teams, and next year we'll only have one. We got the Biloxi Shuckers and the Mississippi Braves. Mississippi Braves are moving to Georgia. Um, you know, when when you're growing up in Mississippi, it's like the colleges are kind of who people pull for. Uh, it's a strange dynamic because the football fans are the New Orleans Saints. The baseball fans are the Atlanta Braves. So it's strange, like, when the Saints play the Falcons in division, it's like, well, the team you pull for in baseball is the team you root against in football with a passion. Uh, but everyone kind of picks their colleges. You know, you got Southern Miss, Old Miss, Mississippi State, and, and plenty other colleges that have great programs. But you, you just grow up, and a lot of kids in Mississippi, their dreams to play for – you know, when I was a kid, it was watching Ron Ron Polk coach Mississippi State in the Omaha all those times, and, and Ole Miss, Southern Miss, uh, Corky Palmer, at Southern Miss. It, it's a lot of kids grow up, you know, watching college sports. And um, you know, obviously, I would love to be a major league baseball player, but when I was a kid, my first dream was to play high school baseball, play college baseball, and then pro baseball wasn't something really on my radar until I went to college and had a couple good years. Um, but Growing up in Mississippi is awesome. It's uh, small communities that really take care of each other. Uh, really, hospitality is insane down there, and uh, they really love baseball in that state. Did you always want to go to Mississippi State? No, I grew up an Alabama fan. Uh, Why would my, that be? My dad uh, played football at Alabama, 86 to 89, under two head coaches. Uh, one of the head coaches was from Mississippi. 
uh, my dad's recruiting story is kind of crazy. It's a long, detailed story. But he ended up at Alabama thanks to um, Ray Perkins, uh, passed away, but a uh, tremendous dude. He's uh, lived in Hattiesburg, Mississippi once he was done coaching. Uh, uh, my dad always spoke really hi highly of him. And after him, his head coach was Gene Stallings. So I grew up an Alabama football fan but watched Mississippi college sports uh, for baseball. Uh, committed to Alabama my freshman year. Uh, but my travel ball team, my high school baseball team, we had so many guys going to Mississippi State that I was like, I don't want to leave these guys. And it just, it didn't feel right to me to leave the state of Mississippi to go play college sports. Uh, I wanted to stay home and, you know, help at the time help bring Mississippi State the first national championship. We failed at it, but we made some good, good runs at it. And uh, luckily, the first year after us, they they finally got it. You watch college baseball more than anybody in pro baseball. I think at least that it's come through for me, Myrtle Beach, then Jacksonville, like we, you were talking about it a few minutes ago before we started. So you talked about that being your dream for so long. Now that you're out of it, you still pay attention to it. You still live in, in Starkville. So what does college baseball mean to you? Because I think people in pro baseball, not everybody has played college baseball like you, Colby. You came from high school. But for you, you got to experience it at the, the top level in the SEC. Look, and and uh, yes, uh, SEC on average is the top level. But man, there's so many good programs. Like on Tuesday nights, we would have South Alabama roll in, and if you didn't bring your A game, they will beat you. Like th there is a lot of good programs across the country, West Coast, uh, Midwest, Northeast. Th th there's plenty of good programs. Like tonight, Mississippi State will play St. John's. Uh, their longtime head coach, Ed Blankmeyer, was my manager in Brooklyn when I was with the Mets. Um, tremendous guy, tremendous coach, and he built a very strong program at St. John. So it's not it's not just the SEC. It's it's a lot of different programs that are really really good. Um, but yeah, I, I still watch college baseball, and even whenever I'm done playing one day, hopefully that's in a long time. Like I love playing a professional baseball. It is a dream come true. It really is, and I hope to do this for a long time. But uh, you know, in Mississippi, like I, I, I always tell people in pro ball that haven't ever experienced it. Uh, I always like I, I told Colby like, but one day I want him to go check out a Saturday night at Duty Noble Field in Starkville, Mississippi, against LSU, Ole Miss, somebody, uh, a big conference Saturday night, and just if you are a baseball fan, like I'm a baseball fan, I love this game for all the hardships it springs, for all the good days, bad days. I love the grind of it. Wouldn't want it any other way. To any baseball fan out there, just go check out a Saturday night at Duty Noble Field in Starkville, Mississippi. There's not much going on there, but by gosh, the whole entire state and town is surrounded, living and dying by every pitch. It's such a cool atmosphere. It's It really is unique. and. I fell in love with it. I drank the Kool-Aid, whatever you want to call it. I, I, <laughs> okay, it, how does that compare <laughs> with <laughs> tailgating on a Saturday afternoon? Uh, tailgating in the fall, it's 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 crazy, man. I always tell like the, the thing I'll say is go go walk around in the fall, and and that's what I love about. It. I live in Starkville because w when when the baseball season ends and I go back to to work on my on my craft, the off season workouts and baseball, I, I have all the facilities right there. Thankful for the you know program and university to allow all the pro guys to come back and do that year round you get entertainment and that's what's so great about it in the fall I get football in the winter I get basketball and spring summertime I'm playing you know, I'm playing baseball uh, but it's just year round entertainment that you get and that's the coolest piece of it and you just get so many people back home that live and die by it man they really do and uh, it, it's it's so hard to explain because I, I wasn't you know I I went to Starkville kind of towards the end of my high school career because my cousin Taylor uh, was a student at Mississippi State and he took me to a baseball game and it, and I, it was like I'm, I'm coming here like, I, I, I want to experience this I want to be a part of it and it it really is cool man and, and don't get me wrong there's so many great things about pro baseball high school baseball it's just the game of baseball I, I really do love it uh, I love the grind of it and um, uh, thankful for my journey. Uh, it's, there it's are some long. things Jake's holding out. He did have a hell of a college career. Yep. He is the all-time mm -hmm. SEC hits leader. I was there for a long time. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and how many hits was that, Jake? <laughs> to be specific, uh, 383. Woo! Yeah. How many singles? 382. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know how many singles. I had some buddies come in town from last year. They came to visit, 
and I introduced Jake to him. And one's a big South Carolina fan, one's a big Georgia fan, and they knew who he was. And another one was a big Florida fan. And they were like, that's Jake Magnum. Because they had to put two and two together because, you know, they come down here, they're not expecting, they're huge college baseball, football fans. And um, South Carolina's kind of like Mississippi is with the professional sports. You got Clemson, South Carolina. You either go to Clemson or you root for South Carolina, one or the other. And it's that in all the sports. So, but they knew who Jake was, and they were like, "Holy cow, he's the all-time SEC hits leader." Was so there... it's a lot bigger deal than, you know, you give it credit for. I was just there for a long time, and don't get me wrong, man. Like my junior year, I was fully prepared to leave. Like I, I, I thought that there was no way I'd come back for my senior year. But when the draft didn't go my way, um, you know, I changed my sights. I let's come back. Let's bring the first national championship to the university and. And, you know, hopefully I get a shot at pro ball. And luckily the Mets drafted me uh, as a senior, um, which is a whole other topic. I, I do wish that, uh, you know, when you commit to a four-year school and you go to four-year schools, I, I don't like the way baseball set up the, uh, you know, uh, the way senior signs get taken. It's, it's tough. I, I was 23 years old when I came out of the draft. I lose my 24-year-old season to COVID. So the 18-19 draft classes of professional baseball wore it. And uh, th that's one thing, you know, it, and it, uh, it's all a part of God's plan. I believe that. And uh, my first full season was age 25. So senior signs that were drafted in 2019, which there were plenty of them. Uh, the Mets, for example, took seven in the top 10 rounds, seven senior signs in the top 10 rounds in 2019. Wore it, man, because you're a little older coming into pro ball. You're already behind the eight ball. And then COVID happens like that. And then next thing you know, you're 25 years old and you haven't played a full season of professional baseball. It, it's it was tough, but I, you know, I, I've loved my journey. Uh, I've loved where I've been. The Mets were great. The Marlins were great. My time in Jacksonville was awesome. Uh, and uh, now with the Rays, it has been spectacular. Uh, the injuries I'm dealing with, the injury I'm dealing with right now stinks, but it's all a part of the process, man. It really is. And uh, I truly believe it's all God's plan. So you've, this is now your third team that you've been with in professional baseball. You started out with the Mets, was mm -hmm. traded over to the Marlins and then traded again yeah. to the Rays. Talk us through a little bit of what that looks like. I know a lot of people out there don't really understand how trades work. They just see them on Twitter or they That's see them on social media. Like walk us through what it is in the thoughts as a player, or the actions as a player. It, it's tough, man. Uh, coming into three straight spring trainings, uh, three big league camps, which is a blessing. Like, I'm very thankful for that. It was a great honor for that with the Mets, Marlins, and now Rays. Um, it, it's difficult, man. You, you, you get it, like I spent four years with the Mets, getting close with all the with my draft class, with all these guys with the Mets, and just like that, uh, you're gone. Then you get close with all these guys with the Marlins, and just like that, you're gone. And I know Colby dealt with a lot of trades in his career, and it, it, it's I'm not the first guy to get traded twice. I, there's been plenty of guys that have been traded yes. way more than me. <laughs> but it's difficult, man, uh, forming these relationships and leaving and having to form new ones. It, that's it's a difficult piece of it, and. The craziest part was is I was the player to be named later in the same day, back-to-back -back years. December 7th, back-to-back -back years, I was the player to be named later in uh, two trades. And, uh, That's a line in a famous movie. It is. Uh, the, the day I got traded, I watched Bull, Bull Durham. <laughs> I rewatched it, and Crash Davis's first line as he walks in, I'm the player to be named later. And I was like, hey, I feel that. <laughs> now you're about as old as he was in that movie. Yeah, 28 years old, Cole. Congratulations. Wait, he was old. he was 28 in that movie? No, nah, I don't think so. He's a little older than that. I thought he was like, I, yeah, I thought he was yeah. like 35-ish. Because in the movie, the Bulls were a ball team. Yeah. Uh, but when the Braves uh, left the Durham Bulls, uh, I think that they switched to AAA at that time. I think. Yeah. And, and the Rays Rays took hold of the uh, Durham Bull. Did you uh, did mind. you walk did you walk down to that old stadium where they filmed it? Yeah, yeah, I did last year when. I was with Jacksonville, and we went to uh, Durham. My dad's company is actually based out of, like, the Durham-Raleigh area. So really? I was familiar with it, yeah. yeah. My sister's boyfriend played at Duke, and he, he's from Durham. Uh, so I, I got some connections uh, in Durham, and, man, Durham's fantastic. Uh, the city's great. It's a baseball community. We'll get 10,000, 11,000, no problem at the games. And that's, that's so cool in minor league baseball, man. Just can't see the ball the first two innings. Shadows are there. A little rough. They're not going rough. anywhere. Been you know, I'm going to say time. it. I think I liked Durham. <laughs> I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to say it. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, you know, man, I, I've really enjoyed my time with Durham and the Rays. The Rays are a great organization. Um, 
there's a lot of good people in baseball, man. That's the one thing I'll say is with the Mets, Marlins, Rays, I've been very fortunate to, to meet a lot of great people in the game of baseball and uh, thankful for those experiences and those relationships that I'll have for the rest of my life. I want to uh, echo something you said, Colby, that Jake Mangum, when we go on the road and people are like, you have Jake Mangum on your team? And I'm sure Patrick Keenis with Durham deals with that, right? Like you are such a household name, but so humble at the same time. And I think that's that's really cool. So Colby, you don't guest host often, but you wanted to be a guest host here. What was it like to coach Jake Mangum? Well, it's my first, it's a privilege to have coached the SEC all-time hit leader. And I did make sure everybody <laughs> knew he was the all-time SEC hits leader. But it, it is. I mean, how many years you were there? Five? Did you play five full or four? Four years. Never got redshirted, so I was there for four years. And okay. did you start when you were a freshman? No. Uh, That's a lot of hits. I started. For I started four opening years. night. And this is a great story. I had four head coaches in four years. My freshman year head coach started me opening night due to someone not being able to play that night. So it was a technicality start. I go 0 for four and miss the cut on a big throw home. We get beat by FAU opening night in front of 15,000. And uh, the next day, we, we review the game, go over some video, and my coach said, I started a freshman last night. It won't happen again. That's my fault. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, man, I am not in a good spot. And uh, didn't start for a couple weeks. My next start was um, game two of SEC play Saturday night at, Saturday night at Vanderbilt. And uh, from that point on, I started every game. So I didn't play non-conference my freshman year, but I played uh, – uh, once SEC play started, I stayed in the lineup. Sophomore year, you know, I started all the games then. Nice. That's almost 100 hits a year. Some, what, what year did you have the most? Senior year, I had 100. And uh, my last hit of the year broke Frazier's single season one. Uh, Adam Frazier, uh, mm -hmm. one of my good friends, great dude, great baseball player. We were talking about him last night because the regionals are here and the Mississippi State's in Virginia. And I'll never forget watching Adam Frazier going six for six against Virginia or game one at the Virginia reg regional. And, um, yeah, man, it's just thinking about all those guys, that's really cool. But so the, do postseason stats count for the – They do. They do. So the, the longer you play in postseason, the more it helps all those stuff. I mean, unless you struggle. They, they If you go 0 for 5 in postseason, it counts. And uh, Troy, how was your postseason experience at Gonzaga? <laughs> so I only got to go to the postseason. I got to go to the postseason every year in the conference tournament. We only won it once. We got snubbed on a, I think we were like, how many, is it, it's not top 25, it's top 50-ish teams? 64, I, field of 64. Okay, so we were the first one out. We were like 66. And so I got snubbed my freshman year. Um, be soft, 65, wouldn't it? You'd be, yeah, yeah, they finished 65. 65 yeah, yeah, finished 65. <laughs> <laughs> I got another comment on that. Um, after that, we went to postseason. I had a broken ham eight. We actually played Max Myers. We went to the Minnesota Regional. Wow. But we weren't very good. And then my <laughs> junior year didn't, you know, West Coast, you kind of need to win the conference tournament if you're going to get an at-large. Or if you're going to go to the a regional, whatever it is. You're not going to get an at-large unless you're just studs. But Jake did say, when you have a midweek, he did say, word for word, Gonzaga will go in and beat Mississippi State. They've been known to do that. They've been known to do that. They've been known to do that. They will go in and win big midweeks because we got some funky lefty that throws 77 mile an hour sliders. Wow. And doesn't throw a fastball. So, you know. Yeah, man. And, and your hometown <laughs> or, or where you're living right now, Charleston, South Carolina, the College of Charleston had a really great year. I think they went 42 and 14 this year and, and they didn't make a regional. So, I mean, you see it all the time. Um, it just it's it's tough man like uh making it into that field of 64 is is the big key because any, anything can happen at that point what, and state uh, isn't how hosting many sec teams made the 64 uh they broke the record this year 11 of 14 sec teams made it this year um that's the most of any ever and uh i was hoping mississippi state would host this year but they didn't they didn't quite i, I thought they would I, I thought they deserved it but uh you know what man i, I think after our last two years uh, of, of struggle, uh, our program struggled the last two years. I think it's kind of the mentality that they have, and I kind of like the fact that they're going on the road for the regional. Because um, our uh, we went to three straight Omaha trips, two with me, and then the first year without us, uh, without my class, uh, they went for a third time in a row. And it started in 2018 when we went on the road to Florida State. 
that kind of started our run. And uh, I think it's a perfect time for Mississippi State to start it again on the road at, at Virginia. Wow. Yep. You're all in on this. I, you think they're going to win the regional? I do. I do. I, I like their. Uh, I like where they're at. They're playing good baseball. Um, our three, four hitters struggled in the SEC tournament, and uh, I'll never forget my senior year was like a really bad SEC tournament showing, and uh, it kind of set my mind right to get to work on some things for the postseason. So I, I, I like where they're at. They got St. John's tonight, a good program, and uh, we'll see what they do. Wow. That's I got exciting. one more for you, Jacob, that's all right. Go ahead. College baseball is a lot different in terms of pro baseball, I think, in the, in the way that power is emphasized. And for you, did you feel pressure to change that? I know it wasn't really 382 singles out of 383 hits, but <laughs> it's different in pro ball. Did you feel a way to, to change that with the Mets, the Marlins, now in particular the Rays with the way they look at the game? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a tough question to answer because – at any level, a base hits a successful at bat. Like if if tr if 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 anybody has a single tonight in their first at bat, they're not going to be mad about that at bat. Um, but when I was in college, it, it was it was tricky. Uh, I, I wasn't a highly touted recruit. I was ranked by my peers the worst player on the team at Christmas break my freshman year. So my freshman spring, I didn't get redshirted. I started opening night due to the technicality. I was just trying to do whatever it took to stay on the field. And at that time, I was 160 pounds, just trying to scrap my way on base to help the team win. And after my freshman year went so well, I just wanted to keep doing that, you know? Um, and I never had a reason to change in college because my role as the leadoff hitter was to hit my way on base. I didn't walk a lot, so I had to hit my way on base. And in college, the strike zone's huge. It's, you gotta protect six inches off, three inches in. It's just what you have to do. And if you get rung up on a two-strike pitch that's six inches off and you come back in the dugout pissed off about it, it's a strike. Like, it's been a strike. It's going to be a strike. you got to protect. So I was having to, you know, slap those really good pitches through the six hole or line drive. And, um, and what I've learned in pro ball is the pitches you swing at dictate what you do. What you do. If you swing in a ball that's six inches off the plate, you can't drive it. So I, I'm, it's, a, it's, it's always going to be a constant state of work for me to continue to get better. I want to drive the baseball, absolutely, and uh, I'll continue to work on that. Um, but I, I, the older I get, the more I understand what I need to do with the plate. And, and, and that's a big shout-out to all the hitting coaches I've had and, and all the organizations I've been in. The Mets helped a lot. The Marlins helped a lot. Now the Rays have helped a lot. Um, uh, me, and, uh, I'm, I'm on the IL right now. Hopefully, hopefully to get off very soon and uh, kind of put this injury behind me. But uh, through that, I'm still working with our hitting coach right now, Kenny Hook, uh, to to become a better hitter. It's a constant state of trying to get better. It's never a finished product. And hopefully, I play this game until I'm 40 years old. Uh, Lord willing, it happens. Um, but even whenever I'm in the last couple years of my career. I'm going to be trying to get better because it's it's the second you think you have this game figured out, it, it will eat you up. <laughs> and I know Colby's laughing because I, I remember last year I got hot and I was like, man, I, I think I know. I, I, I got this. <laughs> and then I swallow a one for 21 week, which was funny. It was at Durham. Yeah. And yeah, that's a Colby whole story. never <sighs> let me live it down. And, um, you know, and that for a good reason, a funny game, man. for a but, good reason, for a good reason. And uh, because you're getting away from what you do best. Yep, and uh, you know it's it's just a constant state of trying to get better, man. You're never a finished product, and and every baseball player will tell you that, except maybe you know the greatest to ever do it, <laughs> maybe. Speaking of that, who's your list? Do you get, do you have a top three? Give me a Mount Rushmore, maybe to maybe top four, best to ever do it. Oh, man, I don't know. That's kind of on the spot, know. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, you Ruth, know they're gonna be Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron. No Braves. Who was your favorite player Aaron? growing up? Oh, growing Chipper, up. Jones. Chipper Jones was Chipper my favorite Jones. player growing up. I, I switched it a big reason because I switched John Chipper. Okay, you got one more for me. Oh, uh, Rafael Palmero. Palmy's a good one. Will, Will Clark. Clark's a good one. Um, Clemente? Man, I don't know. I, I got to go. Um, He's got to go Southern. He's got to go Mississippi State. Oh, got to go State. Southern. Can no, you, man. Troy, can you name any Mississippi State alums that played in the big leagues? <laughs> 
There's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. <laughs> oh, this is not my forte. Can you name one? A name dropped I... one of them earlier. Um. Oh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Frazier. Yeah. Adam Frazier. Yeah. That's one of them. Yeah. All star. Colby. One. <laughs> Go nice fun. going. Colby played against a bunch of them, too. Yeah. Bobby Thigpen. I know that was a really long time do you ago. Remember, <laughs> do you remember a guy named Bobby Thigpen? I do. Troy? No. I have no idea. Is he is he lefty or righty? <laughs> he would play right field and come in and he played right finish field. the games in their heyday back in the Any 80s. Any pitch? Yeah. And then he, I Did it they? He, he set the, what, I don't know if it was a major league record at one time with the White Sox, 50-some saves one year. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Wasn't it Mississippi State that had, back in the day, was it the 80s, that they had like three or four, and they were all like leading the country in home runs? Yeah. Palmero and Will Clark that's what, yep, played okay. together. All right. Thunder and Lightning. Yes. Thunder and, that's what it was. Actually, we had a, when we played Scranton, a guy named Pat McMahon. You know Pat, Pat McMahon? McMahon? Yeah, he was absolutely. here. This guy, I got to know him really well with the Yankees. Yeah. And he's one of my favorite guys I've ever met in baseball which like you said earlier you meet a lot of cool people in baseball and Pat's one of those guys I cherish the friendship I have with him because he is such revered throughout college baseball mm -hmm. and at the time he was at Mississippi State Old Dominion Florida and I've known him since he started with the Yankees he is such a good man he's and a, he speaks very, man. very highly of you and this program and his time in Mississippi it, it's a special place man and uh, yes you know I, I keep up with him I do because I care about you know where I come from and and, uh, and the program, but but uh, man, I, I've really enjoyed uh, pro baseball over the years. It's been so much fun uh, getting to meet everybody, compete against everybody, and just constantly trying to get better at this game. It's been awesome. It's been really really cool. I love the positive attitude you have right now. I like that. I liked it especially, too. Especially I wish I would have saw this last year, like most of the time. It was like this. It was there. But that's there a lot of There was probably a couple of spans. Once when we went to Durham, another one when we were in Norfolk, where this positiveness, I wish would have came out a little more. I think Lehigh Valley was another place where it kind of. Yeah, uh, probably there too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard as a, and I'll speak, I'll speak because I feel Jake, of course, you know that goal. Yes, man. but I, as, a, I as get a, it, I get it. As get a, it. as a hitter and as a baseball player, we want to be perfect and it's hard to let that go. Yes. It's very hard. And, and sometimes it's hard doing what you do and not getting rewarded for it and sitting there and like, okay, what else do I have to do to get to the next yes. step? Yes. And that's the hardest part, which we could go in detail about, like get to the big leagues. And, you know, you're doing, you're having a really good season in AAA. You're putting up, doing numbers, what you do. And teams are looking at it like, you got to do more. And that's the biggest fault a lot of players have is sometimes, okay, I got to do more instead of just doing what you do and do better do that better instead of making the next step and being somebody you're not. And I know we talked about that when we were in Columbus last year because mm -hmm. you hit a ball into the street and you were like, oh, I can hit for power. But yet again, you are a complete hitter. Yes. You're going to have pop, but you are overall a complete hitter. You can hit just about any pitch, any location, and you're going to walk, you're going to steal bases, you're going to play defense. Even when they bounce. Even when they bounce. You never had Even a player a have two hits on balls that bounce. You are Ichiro Suzuki. Yeah. Yeah, that Columbus series last year was strange. I, the ball bounced and I you know, beat out a ground ball. And then I hit the home run. It was uh, that was a weird series. but It was good, though. But to go back to that, you have Tony Gwynn and Wade Boggs in my era when I was playing. And you, do you know who those guys were, Troy? I, I know You've Tony. heard of both of them? Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. No idea if they're lefty or righty. Okay. <laughs> anyway, they were two of the best hitters in that era. And both of them probably could have hit for more power but they hit for extremely high averages and are known as two of the best left-handed hitters ever to play this game. Look, man, there, there's a – I do believe there's a happy balance in baseball that, yes. you know, there, there needs to be guys in the lineup that hit their way on base, like base hits, and there needs to be guys in the lineup that drive runs in. I, I don't think that I'll ever change that, um, that take of mine. Uh, but who knows, you know, there's, I mean, there's different ways to win in baseball. I mean, that's why you have a, a lineup one through nine. You kind of have certain spots that guys hit based on – the type of hitter they are. Mm -hmm. Middle of the order, you're going to have guys that drive in runners. But man, you're going to have guys at the top that get on base all the time. Yeah. Guys at lower, very similar, base. they can do a little bit on base. Right? It is a good thing. And, yes. and, and through pro ball, man, the coolest thing has been kind of picking everyone's brain and just seeing how different everyone is. Everyone has different setups, different approaches, different things that they click. And 
and, and Colby's, you know, and like, I, I for, what what was your career average as a pinch hitter in the major leagues? Oh. What, which is one of the hardest tasks to do. Yes. It's just coming in off the bench in the eighth inning and having to face a bullpen arm that's got great stuff and to say, like, I succeed this at bat. You get one at bat tonight, get it done. And I know Colby was one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, I had I hit like 300 doing it. Yeah, that, I hit better doing un- that than I did playing every day. Unheard. Or getting a start. <laughs> for whatever reason, I was I had that ability, which kept me around for a long time. But it also drove me crazy because the preparation and what you had to do to prepare for those at bats. I felt, you know, when I got done playing, I was like, okay, I'm done. Because every game is a grind mentally because you're always looking in the bullpen, who's coming in, how they're going to attack me, what's the score, who's on base, who's hitting behind me, you know, all the equation. And go up there and try and figure out, decipher what they're, how they're going to approach you, how they're going to attack you. And it was like, okay. But then you had to be able to, you know, get a base hit and have to figure out an approach to get a hit on. So, but it kept me around for a long time. So, Thank I know, you. I know that was my job in college, my freshman year, was the pinch hit guy against a righty. Did you ever have any, like, hey, you're on deck, you're hitting right now? Oh, yeah. Kind of like, yeah. it's like, it's like you got your, you got. I played for different managers. Some would just throw you out there in a heartbeat. <laughs> When pitcher or the hitter on Colby, deck would walk up, oh, yeah, Colby, go hit. Those <laughs> kind of weren't the best. You go up there with a bad attitude sometimes. Yeah, but you try like, not yeah, to. Thanks. Never will get it. Try to never be surprised. But it does happen sometimes. It sneaks up on, you know, even the best managers. But it does happen, and you've got to be ready. So, Jake, I, we're, we're coming to a close here. I, I have one specific question for you. You have been – You've had a lot of success in your career as a baseball player, as a person, even off the field. What do you have for the, the kids that are coming out of high school? They're going into high school. They're wanting to be baseball players. They're wanting to be the next Jake Mangum, even though I don't think there will be. What do you have to say to those kind of guys? Enjoy it, man. This game will eat you up. Find the pleasures in it. Um, I, I'm someone that genuinely I, – I don't know how I'd be able to do this if I didn't have a relationship with God. I'll, I'll say that. 100 percent if it wasn't for my relationship with god i i would this game would eat me up and um relying on him through all the ups and downs of this and um it it's it's my rock it's my cornerstone whatever you want to call it um he is my cornerstone and my rock but it, that's that's number one for me it's there's no doubt about it um but enjoy the game it's uh the game will eat you up it'll the second you have it figured out it will swallow you up and spit you right back out but um enjoy it man it's a it, and always remember it's the game that you were playing in your backyard with your boys from back home uh with a wolf of ball bat or a stick and a and a rock whatever whatever you however you did it um just continue to fall in love with the game and um enjoy it for what it is and um Enjoy and the journey. Enjoy the journey, man. Because I never a, thought in a million years I'd have the career I had in high school or college or now pro ball. Um, I just take it one day at a time. Be thankful for it. Wake up every day thankful for what you do and um, and work your tail off. Um, I'll. The biggest thing for me is I never wanted to have regrets whenever this game does end for me. I, I do not want to look back and say I didn't do this enough. Uh, I didn't do that enough. I should have done this. Just – Give it your all every day. Have fun when the game starts. Enjoy it. And then whenever it's all said and done, if you do that, you won't have any regrets. And um, and that's my big thing. Colby, what you got, man? You I say enjoy the journey. Work your butt off. Have fun doing it. But it's not the destination. It's the journey to get to the destination. I mean, I, I still enjoy coaching. Here I am. We're here in Jacksonville. I'm enjoying this. So it's every day you enjoy doing what you do and doing it for a living so you have to take in every day and it's not the end goal the end goals every player that plays wants to play in the big leagues but i remember my best times are when i was coming up through the minor leagues i have some of my closest friends still are guys i came up with and you know just enjoy the, enjoy the journey enjoy the game and you have to enjoy working on it to be good at it and that's all i got Guys, we enjoyed having both of you on. Colby, thank you. Thank you you for having me. Jake, thank you. I hope soon we see you with the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, Guys, thanks for watching and listening. If you like what you heard, please rate and review us. This is a young podcast. This is only episode nine. And we already had a return 
uh, guest I into should the feel host. honored. Pretty cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm honored Colby wanted to come back yeah. on the day I'm on. Man, yeah. I'm some, honored. Some may say that was the only reason Jake wanted to do this podcast. If you, if that's what it takes to get you guys, guys. I'll be more than willing. What I've been trying to get you. I have been trying to get Troy podcast people to um, interview I've on the podcast this. every yep. day in spring training. I went around. I picked out some fantastic guests. They would have done it, but Troy was a little wishy-washy on it. We're still working on Troy. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm still new to the podcast game. I'm doing my best. But uh, I did but throw a lot of names out there. You did throw a lot of names. It was a lot to filter through. I had to pick, pick out, do some research. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thank, thank y'all for having me, man. Thank you. Thanks, me. Jake. It's always good right. seeing y'all. Always great seeing y'all. Thank and, you, thank and you. Scott, thank you for covering baseball. Uh, last year, you covered 150 games. Um, and I know my family back home really appreciated Your that. Your family is awesome. Oh, they, yeah. they, I, I promise you, every single night, your voice filled um, the home of my grandparents and my, and my family. Um, and I really appreciate that, man. Um, they uh you know a lot of stuff's going on with the family whatever that may be uh but you know every night they get to turn on the tv listen to a, the ball game and uh, i wouldn't be here without them and uh the fact that they were able to always hear that uh meant the world to me and i appreciate that thank you it's you make it easy one of my all-time favorite guys wow troy uh, thanks for being so hard on me last year <laughs> <laughs> for the for the two months i was up here <laughs> oh, troy got you into mario kart right isn't that how that worked out as of right now I'm the defending champion of Mario Kart because the last Mario Kart game that was played, I won and beat Griffin. Y'all weren't there for it, but Conine, as well, of right how now. How many games in a row did he beat you before he that? He won about five in a row. Five, six, but seven. But I won the last one. So right now, the title's with me. It's and, not how uh, you start. It's how you finish. It's not yet. That's exactly right. That's You're exactly as good as your last A.B.? You're right. And the last day, I won uh, yeah, that was I your won last Mario AB. Kart. Grounded into a double play. Thanks, <laughs> quick pitch. <laughs> Thanks, Mejia. Appreciate you. Swing it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate, it. appreciate you, you, Jake. That's Jake Mangum, Greg Colbrin, Troy Johnston. I'm Scott Kornberg. Thanks again for watching and listening, everybody. I'll be back in a couple weeks. Thank you.